Migration is one of the true marvels of nature. And while all different kinds of animals migrate, none are more synonymous with migration than birds. And migrating is a lot harder than you might think. I'm Tony and today we're going to take a look at five amazing migration facts. Only about 40% of all the bird species migrate. And while some of them do only migrate a couple hundred miles, some of them travel much, much further. One of the longest migrations belongs to the Arctic Tern. They travel from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole. Another bird that makes an insane jaunt is a little bird that you might see in your backyards, the black pole warbler. Every fall they head south, flying out over the Atlantic Ocean to South America nonstop for over 1,800 miles. That would be like walking from Cleveland to Yellowstone National Park without stopping for a burger or even sleep along the way. And barn swallows may spend their summers sweeping over our rivers for bugs, but some of them travel as far south as the Falkland Islands. That's a far trip. Makes you wonder how they don't get lost. Most of us think of owls as the really the only birds that are active at night, but a lot of migrating birds actually make their journeys at night. It makes the trip a lot easier without the hot sun beating down on you and helps protect them from predators, like hawks, many of whom typically migrate during the day. And one of the ways scientists believe birds help to orient themselves while migrating is using a little trick that us humans used to do back before GPS. The stars. Using the orientation of the stars as well as which direction the sun is setting and rising helps our feathered friends know they're heading in the right direction. Birds can also sense the magnetic field of the earth. Just like a compass can tell which way is north, birds can just sense it. And because of this, birds can actually return to their wintering destinations even if they've never been there before. Traveling such long distances is taxing, so birds will take any advantage they can get. One of the ways that they can help reduce the energy they spent is to wait for the optimal conditions. In spring, for example, birds will wait until there's a south wind to help push them up north. Flying with a tailwind helps them expend a lot less energy. Sometimes, though, birds will run into bad weather. Sometimes it's a major weather system, a hurricane, or just a strong headwind. And when this happens, the birds have to stop and rest. These birds fall out of their migratory path and have to use whatever available resources are near and wait for conditions to improve. And while these fallouts can be extremely stressful for the birds, they do offer a pretty good opportunity for us to see some cool birds. To prepare for their arduous journey, birds enter a state called hyperphagia. Kind of like a marathon runner carb loading before a big race, a bird will spend much of its time before and during its trip bulking up. Some birds pack on so much fat that they actually double in weight. Do not try that at home. They use this excess fat as an energy boost to get to their ultimate destinations. But even with the best preparations, traveling all that distance is no easy feat. The fact is, many of these birds don't make it. And we humans don't really help that much. Remember, most of these birds are migrating at night using the stars. So when they encounter a big city that has a bunch of lights on, it's easy to get turned around and confused. An estimated one billion birds die every year from window collisions in the US alone. A billion is a big number. But to better put it in perspective, a million seconds is about 11 days and 14 hours. A billion seconds is just over 31 and a half years. To help reduce this number, organizations like the Ohio Bird Conservation Initiative have introduced lights out programs. The goal of these programs is to help make urban landscapes safer for migratory birds by getting cities to turn off their lights at night during migration. With lights out programs throughout the country, including here in Cleveland, they're hoping to make the trip a little bit safer for our feathered friends. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and share it. And if you have any questions or comments, those can go down below. 
Don't forget to follow Lake Metro Parks on social media and visit lakemetroparks.com for more info. Until next time, I'm Tony and I'll see you later.